So, before we get into the video proper, I have to admit to doing something of a bit of a stupid. Um, I recorded a video dismantling this uh, Jack of All Trades travel adapter that converts just, well, just about any kind of plug into just about any other kind of plug. Um, they're not the safest thing in the planet, and that's what my video was all about, and I was going to dismantle it. Uh, I did it in two halves. Uh, my first attempt at recording the first half didn't go well because you can hear the kids screaming in the background and oh geez, it didn't work out. Re-recorded it to do it properly in the daytime where the kids were gone. And then my phone started complaining, oh you're running out of space. Would you like to delete some of these videos? It suggested some and I accidentally deleted the wrong video. So I've had to revert back to using the video with the kids screaming in the background. I'm going to edit it up as best I can but uh, I do apologise for the screaming kids. So. Hello everyone, um, I'd like to talk a bit about travel adapters, or specifically this type of travel adapter which attempts to be the jack of all trades and ends up being the master and on and being a bit unsafe. Uh, I used the term deadly in the video title, which some people say is a bit melodramatic, a bit sort of clickbaity, but no, I stand by that. I think this type of charge uh, adapter can be um, deadly in the wrong hands. And also, I'm in the kitchen doing this because the shed is still too cold. So anyway, let's have a look at it to begin with. Um, so it basically attempts to turn pretty much any kind of plug into any other kind of plug. And look at this, look at the viciousness of this. So you got the British plug here, British Irish plug. Let's... Josie, let go of your brother. Oh dear children, I'll be right with you. The children have been suitably chastised. Um, so you got the American style tie, Australian, uh, coming out here. And you pull that out and you got the European style as well. That kind of looks like a massager of some kind, like an, a, a sensual massage. Trying to do my best by a white voice there, I'm failing. Anyway, so let's put this all back in. Um, the first thing you notice wrong here is uh, this slot here. It's for the earth pin of various types of plugs. So they've tried to accommodate every kind of imaginable. So they've got the square for the British BS1363, which is the British standard for plugs, which is also used in Ireland, where I live. The round, various rounds here, one, round ones here, which are used for the European, American uh, pins, or European pins for earth, which are optional on those plugs, depending on the device being used. And two uh, live neutral slots here for that can accommodate virtually any kind of uh, plug. Uh, so the first problem is this: if we, if I take a genuine plug uh, socket that uh, complies with BS one three six three, you will notice here there's a, there's a shutter over the live and neutral. And the only way to open those is to actually put an earth pin in here. Can you see this? Get in focus, come on now. Doesn't really show up very well. But. That's kind of got it. So if you actually look at the plug in use, this is our Kel. You notice the earth pin slightly longer, goes in. The earth pin opens the slots, the, the shutters, and then you can get the earth uh, live and neutral in. So, without the earth pin, those two shutters should not open and they should prevent all attempts at access, other than brute force. And the problem is, is that... This doesn't prevent that, because the actual shutters here are just at, at an angle. And anything can go in. To be honest with you, there's no point having even these red shutters here because <laughs> you should, what's the point of them? They just let anything through. They don't prevent anything. They're just, just for show. Um, okay, you're not going to get your finger in there, but maybe a child might. But you know, at the very least, it's not complying with BS1363. And uh, probably whatever standard is in use in various other countries that have uh, that also require shutters on their sockets. There goes my light set up. Uh, the joys of working in the kitchen with bad lighting. Right. So, um, 
Uh, I want to do a continuity test just to see something. So I'll open up all the pins. Get my trusty uh, meter out. That's a uh, Unity, quite a nice meter. Nice and chunky. So I stick the, that into the live socket, the live uh, hole. There's continuity on all the pins. Do the same in neutral. Now, a lot of these would uh, maintain continuity even when the pins are in. But if I push the pins in here, you'll. I have to give them the credit for doing this. Continuity isn't maintained. Same on the, uh, the neutral side. So, um, so there's no continuity when the pins are in. Which is good. Well, actually, to be honest with you, I've seen ones like this before where the continuity is maintained even when the pins are in. Well, you come from America or Australia or Thailand or wherever the whatever countries uses the two pin plug or France or Germany or wherever. And you're unplugging in and you unplug. And you go like that. Not a problem. And you go around by the side. Let's switch this on just for completeness. The problem comes is whenever you're pulling over the top, you accidentally do that. Oh, that's not alive. And this means that oh, that's the chances of that happening. Well, pretty low actually, but um, it could happen. And uh, one of the, there's several sort of unwritten rules of electronics. One is keep everything simple. This is way too complicated to get the job done. Uh, the other one is really you should be keeping any poten uh, potential live parts hidden to the user end user or behind shields or make sure that there's enough fail safes involved that if they accidentally uh, press a button or release a pin it's not going to electrocute them and in this case they haven't done that so I say everything's fine here but if you accidentally release it oh you're going to touch it as it comes out so do that again or even just, just plugging it in like that, you unplug it, ah, you've touched the live and you're trying, you're dead. Or in pain. So there you go. So, um, let's take it apart. Well, that was harder than expected. Um, there is, there was a single screw. Uh, here, but that screw, uh, I couldn't undo it because uh, the heads were soft metal and the, the screwdriver uh, wrecked the head of it, so I couldn't actually get a grip. So, in the end, up I just used brute force. So, anyway, here we are inside. There's a little LED here, which is actually burst. I held it up to the light, and I can see the connection's broken, uh, and that's coming straight off the main. The these uh, bus bars straight from the mains, um, which is no. Oh, not what I expected. I expected some kind of circuitry to be driving that, you know, to drop down the voltage or whatever. But there you go. Um, what we have here, if we take this, this was in here, and there was these springs behind it. They came shooting out when I dismantled it. So it's upside down. So what happens is when you release the button, that shoots out for the British one, and the the US style one was up here as well. Um, for the European style, there was two little pins, so I'm assuming as, as it lay flat in here, there's no connection. As it tilted up, it would press against the bus bars. So, um, what's the, what's my, how does this work? Well, as it comes out, these two contacts here press against these two contacts here. Uh, when I say it's safe, no. The problem is, is that it's cheap plastic. Over time, it's going to wobble. It's going to lose uh, strength. At the moment, it, no. My biggest concern is that 
something could happen to push these against here and then they would become live even though they're attracted okay it's, is it likely to happen no but the thing with electronics is keep it simple because if there is a safety problem someone someday will find themselves the victim of that safety problem uh my biggest concern would probably be arcing because this is a bit loose and you'd have arcing here and that would cause sparks and you don't want that at all and the same would apply to the other end as well which is basically the same principle but with uh, the us sale prongs and i've actually lost the the us uh, plugs they came shooting out when i opened it oh they are there they're stuck inside it so that's actually completely jammed in i actually made a mess of that so yeah it's the exact same principle in reverse comes out and press this against now maybe more of a concern here with these punk prongs touching against the copper the the terminals here like they there they rotate they get uh loose no oh, they can yeah it's touching so they could theoretically go live even when they're attracted the good old bs 1363 demanding that the the pins be partially insulated helps protect this end uh, from that same problem where the pins could uh, come in contact with the bus bars. Um, what else have we got? What have we got here? I'm using the spring as a pointer. It looks like at some point there was actually something attached here. I don't know if you can see it. I wonder if they attached something at the factory um, and then decided they didn't want it and came around and started cutting them off en masse. <laughs> I don't know. There, well, there was something there at some point anyway. Um, I wonder. Actually, looking at the label on this, the Travel Universal Adapter Surge Protector. I don't see any surge protection circuitry at all. There's no circuitry as such. Like, it's just two bus bars pressing against the pins. That's really all there is to it. Um, that'd be a lesson, don't believe stuff like this um and again surge protection is it's, is it really necessary in a westernized country where the power supplies are pretty pretty decent like i'd rather have a fuse and something like this than surge protection i suppose a fuse is a surge protector but um yeah but there's absolutely no surge protection in this at all whatsoever none so uh so my overall opinion is it is dangerous you shouldn't buy it um or buy anything like this it's it's too complicated it's a jack of all trades like it violates bs 1363 which would actually make use in the uk illegal okay your chances of getting caught are zil zilch but you know it's still be illegal to use in the uk um and also the fact is like if you the pins coming out and going live depending on the socket you're using like, and there's also the small risk of the pins going live even when they're attracted it's just dangerous you don't want that especially if your kids are around you know it's uh, no, it's it's a it's it's potentially deadly, and I I know uh, you don't want no stick with us at all. Honestly, just buy the cheap, basic two you know, uh, two prong adapters that convert one specific type of plug to another specific type of plug. They can't go wrong. There's no moving parts. There's no circuitry. They're just simple and they're safe, and you can't go wrong. And don't waste your money on this crap. Thank you.